Hello and welcome to this video showcasing how you can actually configure the generic LLM connector in order to bring your own LLM into ServiceNow. Now the use cases in which you might want to do this is you might be using Nelsys skill kit or using the generic AI controller directly and you want to use an LLM that is not provided either out of the box or you don't have a spoke for. Now, before we go into the instance itself, I do want to just set a baseline of what we'll be doing here. So within ServiceNow, the way that Generative AI works is there's kind of four primary steps. There's that of you go out and you gather inputs. So this is collecting data from pretty much anywhere, internal, external to the system. This data is combined with pre-configured or generic prompts, which is then sent off to an LLM. Now, LLM or large language model, we will generally be provided by a particular um, company. Now we do provide out of the box the ability to connect to some OEM models or our now LLM itself. However, you might want to use an external LLM that you kind of have the licenses for and you have additional control over. To do so, we provide a number of out-of-the-box spokes for you to easily connect to those on this list. Now, by the time you're watching this video, this list may or may not have expanded, but do know if you connect to any of those, it's a very straightforward process. You just need to provide in details such as an MP API key, an endpoint, and perhaps additional content such as region, just dependent on those providers' requests. Now, if you're wanting to use a model that is not included within that list of spokes, that then this video is what you will need because we will be using the generic LLM connector to connect out to a your own, bring your own model. Now, in terms of what happens here is if we go back, we have the data, we have the prompt, we pass it to the LLM, and then a response is generated for us to do something with it. Now, what you will need for this configuration, you need to have both the API endpoint and the API key from your provider. You have to have the actual name of the model that you will be using and a solid understanding of the expected request and response formats. So this essentially means going out and getting the API documentation and looking at the JSON objects that are both expected by the API and what is returned. Once you have all that information, we can then go and configure it. So today we'll be creating a new connection and credential record. We we'll also create a new model and transformer record before actually going in and testing um, just to showcase how this works. Now, as mentioned, the first thing we'll be doing is creating a new connection and credential alias record. To do so, we go to the connection and credential aliases table and click new. Now within this record, we want to give it a name. In our case, we're going to be connecting to the mixed rule model. So we're going to name it mixed rule. We save the record. We then click new to create a new connection record. Now here, we're going to say the connection record is called Mixtral LLM Connection. And then the connection URL is essentially the endpoint that you'll be using. Now today, I'm going to be connecting out to the Hugging Face model, which is Mixtral. So to do so, I open up inference providers and I get the endpoint that I'm going to be hitting when I actually call this model and paste it in here. We then save the record and then we go out and create a new credential record. Now, this is where we actually create and host our API key. So make sure you click new and then API key credentials. We provide the name, we can just say mixture LM API key. 
and then you copy and paste the key in here. Hit submit. And then save the record once again, just to make sure that the credential record is saved. And that's the first step done. We then have to go and create the model config record. To find this table, we search for sys underscore generative underscore AI underscore model underscore config table. This is where references to all the different LLMs are hosted, and we want to create a new reference. So we click new, hit active, and we provide a model name. Now, if you are using Hugging Face as well, you can actually see down here that we have um, part of the model name that we want to use down here. And we can just copy and paste it in here. Note, as of March uh, 2025, there is a 40 character limit on this model field. So if your model name takes up more space than 40 characters, you will just have to do a subsection of it and then append it later on within the transformer group. So I'll showcase that fix, but this also may have been resolved by the time you're watching this. So you can also just give it a go um, and see if it works. We now need to add in the connection and credential record that we just created, which was mixed role LLM. And then we need to put in the provider. Now, this provider for bring your own LLMs is going to be the custom LLM option seen here. You then save the record. And that's it for the model config. We now need to head to the one extend capability table to map out the capability to the appropriate model. To do so, we go to the sys one extend capability table and we search for generic prompt. Within this record, you want to go to the definition configs related list and scroll down until you find generic prompt is custom LLM. You want to make sure that the default value for this row is set to true, because this means that each time you run the skill, it will actually use this um, functionality and know, okay, when I'm calling generic prompt, I want to use this custom LLM that I've set up. So make sure that you do that. And we are going to another table called sys journal of AI custom LLM transformer. We want to create a new transformer record. And again, this is what you will be using to translate the output from surface now into what your API expects and then translating the JSON response into the format that service now expects. So in our scenario, we are using the mixed rule model. So what we're going to be doing is if I copy and paste this, is first of all, we give it the model that we'll be using. So in our scenario, it was the mixed rule instruct model. And then if we go line by line, so we get the request data, we get the prompt data, and this just comes in from the response. Um, so if you're creating a custom skill with analysis skill kit, the prompt will actually be included in there. Now in our scenario, due to that current scenario where the model name can only take 40 characters, we are actually appending on in this variable here, the rest of the model name. So if you're running to that error, you can just follow this. Um, once you have the model and the prompt, what we do is we construct the body of the message, which will be sent out to the model. Now do remember that this is specific to the mixture model. And when you're creating this configuration, if you have a specific LLM you're using, you'll, this um, script may not actually work for you. But in our scenario, the way that it works is we pass in the messages where we define the role, 
The prompt is referred to as content. We then also provide the model name, max tokens, and we need to let include in the JSON that stream equals false. We then also add in a header that defines the content type and you return both the body and the headers. Now the best way to figure out what the JSON needs to look like um, is actually to open up terminal if you're a Mac user and do a curl request. Now this request will look something like this where we have curl, we have the URL, the authorization header, and then we actually see the JSON message that is sent over to the um, API host with each of these fields where we say, okay, you know, body dot model equals this model name, messages dot role equals user content messages dot content equals the prompt. So test that out and see if you get a response. If not, you might have an error with your API key or something along those lines. So um, do just give that a go if you have the option. You can also use Postman or similar to actually test your API key and make sure that the JSON format actually works. So that's initial request transformer. Now looking at the response transformer, again, I'm going to copy and paste what I have already created. And the best way to do this again is to look at the output from this curl request. You can put it into a JSON view to fire just to make it a bit easier to read. But what gets returned is an ID, which we don't particularly care about. The object, again, don't care about. But the important parts that we see down here is actually the message response. And that contains the actual response from the um, request that we want to provide to the user or do something with. So to get access to that, what we are going to be doing is adding to this response text array, response body, which is the actual entire JSON object that we get back. We get the first response from that in that array, dot message, dot content. And if you look in this JSON here, message dot content equals the response. You then return that response text. And this just makes, means that it's all set up for you to actually use this custom LLM and ServiceNow knows um, exactly what it needs to send out and how to interpret what gets sent back. So that is it. So if we go ahead and go into Nelson's skill kit, now that we're in skill kit, we'll click create skill, skill name, KPI, generator, mixed role. And we select the default provider. Now in this scenario, we're going to select custom LLM because this is one that actually points to that model that you just configured and the provider API will be custom API. So if we create the skill and go to the prompt editor, copy and paste the prompt. So you can see on the left here that the provider is custom LLM. And if we save this prompt and run a test, you can verify if your connection has actually been configured. And yes, we get a response. And within this response, if we click on the rounded prompt, you can scroll down and see exactly what was sent to the LLM. And then also the response here. So that was how to connect and test your bring your own model connection. I do hope it was helpful. Thank you.